Good evening. Fuel prices have seen a record rise today across most of the region. They're now heading towards £2 a litre and experts say prices are likely to go even higher. Motorists on the M23 M23 in Sussex were paying £1.89 today for diesel, but we saw many forecourts charging as much as £1.93, as Sarah Saunders now reports. Increasingly cash-strapped drivers were filling up in Bearstead today where diesel is on sale for more than £1.93 a litre. I'm actually going to work. I had a William Harvey hospital, I'm a doctor, and um, the pump price has been horrible, horrendously expensive. I was actually going to pull up at Shell, and I saw the pump price, almost £2 per litre, and it's, this is not sustainable, I must say. It's really, it's very, very expensive. Restrictions on Russian oil are driving prices ever higher leaving mum Nikki Lewis opting to ditch the car whenever she can. And I walk most places now because, yeah, it's a lot of money. But with some petrol stations charging wildly different prices within yards of each other, there are calls for more transparent pricing and a cut in fuel duty. UK drivers are still the highest tax in the world. What we're calling for is the government to actually put a significant cut in fuel duty, at least five pence, and the other one, of course, is we need to introduce a, a pump pricing regulatory body that actually monitors that, that we're getting fair pricing at the pumps. We've got Ofcom, we've got Ofgem, we've got Ofwatch. Why haven't we got off pump? We want pump watch. OK, thank you. At this taxi and courier firm in Maidstone, they're trying to absorb the price rises rather than pass them on to customers. A taxi is, in some ways, a luxury for some people. And if they remove that luxury, then, then we don't exist. So in the meantime, you and your drivers are having to absorb the difference? Yep, every, yeah, every, everybody's taking a bit, of, a bit of a hit, even though everything around us is increasing. We're, um, we're getting less, so it, it kind of every month you, you're worse off than what you were two or three years ago. And all this has sparked an interest in electric. Since the tragic invasion of the Ukraine and the rapid rising of the petrol and diesel prices, we've seen an increase in our highs of about 130%. So the highs have risen very sharply in the short period of time already. There is a price to pay for tightening the economic noose around Russia. That much is already clear at the petrol pumps. Sarah Saunders reporting there. Well, to try and prevent the situation in the future, climate change campaigners want more investment in wind and solar farms. The chair of the UK's Climate Change Committee has been on a tour of Kent today. Lord Devon also said more nuclear power was part of the transition away from fossil fuels. Well, let's return to the crisis in Ukraine, where two million refugees are now on the move. 22,000 people have applied to the UK for an emergency visa, but so far only 760 have been granted. While one of them was for Ola Smolik, who has managed to get her two young sons to safety with her sister in Canterbury. Tony Green has been to meet her to find out what she's endured on her 2,000-mile journey. Heading to Poland, this was just the beginning of a two and a half thousand mile journey for Olha Smolik and her two young sons. Before they had even left Ukraine, they had to walk to the border, queuing for 20 hours to cross. It was very uh, difficult situation for us because we have no car and uh, uh, should to do it uh, by feet and uh, children was very, very tired. I was very exhausted. Olena, a lecturer at the University of Kent, travelled to France to help her sister. But the visa process wasn't easy and would be worse for those who don't have any help. If I was uh, alone with my children, it's uh, it was close to now. impossible. It's impossible to, 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 to do this. Were there times when you thought, I'm never going to get to the UK. And what was what did it actually feel once you arrived? Uh, I, I thought about uh, uh, this all all my way. I'm so tired. Uh, children cried. I had to be strong for them. I told them that we are going to such vacation. We have traveled because. Uh, I don't. I, I don't want that this stressful situation. Uh, but uh, uh, on the border, 
I should to talk to them that we have no home and we have no place where, where we could go back. Having fled her home, Olha and her children are finally safe and with the only family they have. But when or if they can ever return is unknown. Tony Green, ITV News, Canterbury. Well, an estate agent in Tunbridge is offering a property for two Ukrainian families to move into rent-free for at least six months. Jamie Rogers says it will be fully furnished and have Wi-Fi so they can contact family back home in the Ukraine. He says he wants to do what he can for those fleeing the conflict. It's something I feel passionate about. I've done all sorts of help in other ways and this was an opportunity to come available that I was involved in, so I'd really like to, uh, to promote it and obviously help a family, or help two families potentially, um, come to the UK. In other news tonight, a public inquiry into the running of an immigration removal centre in Sussex has been shown dramatic footage of staff overpowering detainees. The hearing follows a TV investigation which raised concerns about verbal abuse at Brook House near Gatwick Airport. This report by Malcolm Shaw starts with images that you may find upsetting. A detainee at Brook House has removed his clothes and is refusing to leave his room. Officers at the Immigration Removal Centre decide to use force against him. He's restrained and handcuffed, but continues to call out and refuses to stand. Eventually, officers carry him out of his room. The manager in charge gives his team a debrief after the incident. A job well done by the staff. Spoken to them individually about some some um, error, uh, not errors, but some learning points that we could have done differently. Uh, Today, that manager Steve Dix gave evidence at the public inquiry into the running of Brook House. Uh, do you maintain that it was a job well done? No CNR is easy or goes 100% how you plan. Because if we are dealing, we are all human beings and we deal with human beings. Um, and again, in hindsight that there were clearly mistakes and errors made. The inquiry was shown video of another incident involving Mr Dix. He asks a detainee to leave his room. The man begins to walk towards the door, but other officers run in and overpower him. Steve Dix is heard to say no, 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 as they do so. Do you wish that you'd waited for the answer to that question to be given? Um, <clears throat> yes, if I, didn't, if I didn't wait, then obviously I wish I... I did wait and um, I gave them enough opportunity, maybe. The public inquiry into the centre at Gatwick follows allegations of ill treatment of detainees made in a BBC Panorama programme. The hearing has been told staff were often under extreme pressure. Brook House is now run by a different company. Malcolm Shaw, ITV News. And finally tonight, on a lighter note, a first edition Harry Potter book has fetched £69,000 at auction. The owner from West Sussex kept it in darkness and unopened for 25 years. They bought the hardback copy for just £12.99. It's one of only 500 from the first print run back in 1997. And it was only by a fortunate twist of fate that the owner still had the book to sell. So he bought it. He was a collector of children's books. He saw a, a review in the bookseller magazine and thought it sounded interesting. Uh, and he ordered it. And when it arrived, it, it didn't have a dust jacket. And other ones he'd seen on the shelves in the bookshop had jackets. So he tried to return it. Um, I expect he's quite glad that they, they sort of didn't accept the return. But he's delighted. Weather time. Here's Chris Page. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent Boilers and Heat Pumps, sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there. Very good evening to you. Today, across the region, there's been some decent spells of sunshine. It's also been fairly mild for the time of year. Temperatures into low double digits. And as we go through this evening and overnight, we do have a weakening weather front, which will also be there through tomorrow, just driving in a few light outbreaks of rain. But it's not really until we head towards Friday we start to see the next frontal system moving in from the Atlantic, and that will drive in some showers as we end the week. The rest of this evening and overnight, though, we've got some clear spells around, but that weakening frontal system that we spoke about, driving in a little bit more cloud. The wind's gradually starting to ease, but coming in from a southerly direction means that temperatures won't drop much lower than 9 to 10 degrees. 
A mild start then for all as we kick off into Thursday morning. Some light rain through the first part of the day, but I'm hopeful it will brighten up into the afternoon. The best of the brightness across eastern parts of Kent, but the further west you are, there still could be the odd isolated shower. But with lighter winds tomorrow and temperatures could come in around 13 degrees Celsius, it won't feel so bad at all. As we go towards Friday, more showers into the afternoon after a bright start to the day, but for the weekend, Saturday looks to be drier than Sunday. Good night. Valent. Sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. And that is all from us for tonight. We're back tomorrow morning at 6 with Good Morning Britain. But for me and all of us here on the Lake Team tonight, thanks for your company. See you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you.